So Colby Brown is a landscape and humanitarian photographer who travels the world documenting in it and helping people in need. Kobe has traveled to Iceland to teach workshops, I think more than nine times already. Every place he travels, he walks away with stunning photographs to sell to clients and to aid in selling his future workshops. But like many other photographers, Kobe actually uses Smugma for his photographs. But also like many other photographers, he, comp he combines his use of Smug Mug with WordPress, meaning his website runs 100% on WordPress. And then in the top menu, he links to his galleries in Smug Mug. Colby is using the X theme, which is growing in popularity among his users. It's one of the top selling themes on Theme Forest. The website is bright, big, clear, and bold and it responds really nice on mobile. His website has a gorgeous slideshow showcasing his best photographs. Colby is using NextGen Pro to display his sample photographs from his workshops to help sell workshops in the future. So in theory, NextGen Pro has become part of his social proof. He is also using NextGen Pro within his blog posts of gear reviews. But he is still using SmugMug for his portfolio and to sell his photographs. So the question becomes, why? What makes SmugMug so attractive is the feature set, the ease of use for its end users and its target market, namely photographers. For $300 a year, photographers get an entire website whether you use the website portion or not, designed for them with the ability to upload unlimited high resolution raw photographs and to sell them with print labs fully integrated. So SmugMug makes displaying and selling photographs a no-brainer. So then the question becomes, why are photographers also using WordPress? Why are they using both? So to really understand uh, why so many photographers and visual artists use SmugMug or a similar type platform over WordPress, or a WordPress plugin for that matter, it is important to understand the fundamental differences between the various plugins. Everybody has their own specific wants and needs, and there are lots of great systems out there for everything that you can imagine, but not one of them is perfect for every use case. Pippin Williamson of Easy Digital Download said this in his podcast called Applied Filters in episode 38. It's a very intelligent quote. It's very true. I highly recommend listening to that one episode because um, it will really put this all into perspective. So the last time I searched the WordPress directory for the keyword e-commerce, there was over 700 plugins. A lot of e-commerce plugins. How many of those are designed for general e-commerce users? like for selling shirts, bags, sneakers, whatever. How many of those are designed for selling images? Let's break that down even more. How many of those are designed to display images or manage images anyway? If you go through all 700 plus plugins, you're likely gonna find a handful, literally a handful, that are designed that way. Um, so most likely, the solution you want for to sell your images is what is uh, dictated by the target market. So I talked about smug mugs. Photographers are going there, visual artists are going there because of what is offered to them. Because that's tailored for that target market. So another difference between many of the plugins is the business model. Popular e-commerce plugins uh, that use the freemium model are ones like WooCommerce, Easy Digital Downloads, Cell Media and Exchange. Um, these are all done by very uh, popular WordPress developers um, and they're growing in popularity every day. WooCommerce is the most popular e-commerce plugin now acquired by Automatic. So then there's also the premium model where you simply purchase the plugin 
for any use. So Sunshine Photo Cart, Pro Photo Proofing, and NextGen Pro are all examples of this. You might argue NextGen Pro falls under the freemium model because uh, NextGen Gallery is free and then there's the, the paid version. But the e-commerce aspect is only available in NextGen Pro, not in NextGen Gallery. Then of course there's the 100% free model where uh, you the every part of the plugin is free, there's nothing to pay for at all. And PhotoPress actually falls into this. So there's not necessarily a downside to either method, but again, the best way to do this could be dictated by the target market. So next up is the platform extension model, where you have plugins like WooCommerce, and Easy Digital Downloads, and Cell Media, and PhotoPress, and, and Exchange. They all have the, the plugin, the main core plugin, and then you can get additional extensions to add more functionality on top of it. So this is common. Um, it's beneficial for developers more than the users because then the developers can say, well, my, the, my client doesn't need this and doesn't need this, so I'm only going to you know, use these specific extensions. There's another advantage because then the, the main core product has less, less code, less functionality, and could be a little bit easier to develop <laughs> extensions for specific for their clients. Um, a non, a, there's also module-based, which are very similar. So a non-e-commerce plugin that uses modules is Jetpack. So a lot of people have heard of Jetpack. It comes installed with a lot of WordPress with one clicks. Um, and all you do is activate the modules you need. So very similar, uh, very similar platform. Then there's a single plugin model. And in a way, this is the exact opposite. It's just a plugin designed for the end user in mind that has all the functionality the end user wants and will utilize in their workflow within the plugin. There is no reason to add more extensions, although it's very possible and we've seen it all the time that people are adding extensions to the single plugin model. Um, so NextGen Gallery is a good example of, of that, where there's a core plugin that has all the functionality that users want, and then third parties are actually adding more functionality to it. The common trend within the last few items, as I keep saying, is target market. So plugins designed for e-commerce may not be, be best for selling images, whereas plugins designed for images may not be best for selling t-shirts. Although I've seen that happen. Um, so for example, NextGen Gallery comes out of a market for photographers. So it appeals less to the WordPress developer community who prefers simple over more features. And for those who want to write their own customizations. However, it appears, uh, it appeals to the, uh, to the end user. Being photographers and other advanced imaging professionals, anyone who works with a lot of images on a regular basis. So determining the target market of the website should help narrow down the best choice for selling images on a WordPress website. So for example, if you need to sell, uh, like I said, t-shirts, is NextGen Gallery, uh, Next Gallery and NextGen Pro the best for selling t-shirts? No, because it's not designed for general e-commerce. It's designed for selling images. Um, so think about target market as you think about what plugin is best. So as I talk about a few e-commerce plugins, I want to point out that each has its own flaws in their own respective areas. Not every plugin is right for every task or every target market. It is important to keep in mind the WordPress community is just that. It is a community. So if you see something that you believe can be improved, reach out to those developers with that feedback. Um, don't be negative. Be helpful. As developers, if there's any developers here, be willing to hear that feedback and roll with it. It's very important because that helps the WordPress community uh, grow and strive even more. So let's start with the most popular e-commerce plugin that's out there. Um, now owned by Automatic. It is, uh, like I said, the most popular. It has over a million users. Um, and it's popular for so many reasons. It's feature rich. Uh, it can handle pretty much any e-commerce task you throw at it. They now have that photography extension. So when you mix the photography extension with their product grouping extension, it makes selling images a little bit easier than it would otherwise. Because now you can have a group with a specific set price, and you can quickly upload your images and sell them uh, using their photography extension. Adding the PayPal Express and Stripe extensions means users can now accept credit cards and PayPal more efficiently. PayPal standard is kind of flawed in a way. Um, they have this thing called instant payment notification, which is 
Many times, not so instant, it's usually about a five or 10 minute delay. So PayPal Express uses APIs, which is a lot more, uh, it's a lot faster and a lot safer as far as the data going back and forth. Um, so while it may not have the gallery management built in, it does have this photography extension, uh, and, which has a collections feature, so you can make these groups of different photos, and then use the product grouping to actually create these lists of uh, prices. However, um, so, so I know a lot of photographers are using this already. There's a lot of photographers in my local networking group that are using WooCommerce, and because they were originally, and now they're using this photography extension. They don't change their photos often enough, so it works well for them. But for those who are um, constantly changing what photos are available for sale, they are finding it a little bit uh, not intuitive as far as design, being designed for a photographer. That doesn't mean it may not be great for a painter or a, a logo designer or anything like that. It just means for photographers, it's not there yet where, where they want it. Um, so they're giving their feedback to, to WooCommerce about this, and hopefully that gets improved. I think Exchange is like WooCommerce. It's feature rich. Um, they also have a, a bunch of extensions. They have a pro extension bundle where you can buy all their extensions in one shot for like 130, 150 a, uh, a year. It's not bad. Um, so you can utilize all their extensions at one price. Also like WooCommerce, it's really designed for selling physical and digital products, but they have no image extension at all. So each image you upload is its own product. So it's one by one, you have to add the price, one by one, variable, one by one. So it's not very quick for selling images, but it is great for selling pretty much any other type of product that needs one price. Um, then there's Easy Digital Downloads. So I just quoted Pippin before. I personally use Easy Digital Downloads on my website to sell my ebooks, and my Lightroom presets, and things like that. I love the simplicity of the plugin for this purpose, um, and I have to give Pippin a lot of credit because he's kept this plugin very, very basic um, for how much it can actually do. So this is another plugin designed for general e-commerce use. It's obviously designed for selling digital downloads. So really, if you want to sell physical products with this, you have to add an extension to do that. So it's actually the opposite of what we, the WooCommerce and Exchange, where they already do digital and uh, physical products. This only does digital by default, and you have to add an extension to do physical. So um, it's a really neat plugin. You can even add uh, watermarking to, to the images you upload with another extension. And I think he now offers a, a preset pack where you can make your own, uh, uh, not preset pack, an uh, extension bundle. So you can make your own bundle and get a discount on them, like five or whatever uh, extensions. And he's got a lot of extensions. Then there's Graph Paper Press. It's a very popular uh, theme company. They've got a lot of themes out there. And they now have a plugin called Cell Media. It's a very basic plugin. The, the, the core plugin is free. And it's designed for selling digital downloads of images. But really, you can sell anything in your media library. So PDFs, um, or zips, or whatever you, whatever you upload in your media library. It's also an extension uh, model. So in order to offer, now this is designed for selling images, really. Um, but in order to sell physical products, you have to install, install the physical print extension. And to do watermarking, you have to install the watermarking extension, and so on and so on. So it's very basic in its core. And they give you the extensions that add more image-centric selling features to it. But if you need a very simple way to sell images, you don't want anything with this too complex. All you need is digital, or if you just want to buy their, their physical extension, you can have a very quick um, you know, image store within minutes. Profoto is another popular theme company in the photography space. And in fact, there's many photographers in my network also using this theme uh, as well. And it's actually one of the most popular wedding photography themes uh, to boot. So there's, there's tons and tons of wedding photographers using it. There is a little bit of a downside, unfortunately, that um, their gallery system is built into the theme. So their, uh, their new proofing plugin, which is their e-commerce plugin, you have to use their uh, gallery system in order to use their, their e-commerce plugin. And what this means is if you ever change your themes, 
even if you had that plugin installed, you lose all your, your galleries. You can't sell anything anymore. So um, a lot of companies, including us, we make our phone party makes a theme that also has a gallery system built in. We're moving away from that because we realize that customers, you know, every few years are gonna to want to change themes. We want them to keep their, their e-commerce system going. So we're actually stripping out our um, e our gallery system and replacing with next gen gallery and next gen pro. Um, but unfortunately, Profoto is, looks like they're going a different route. They're going in this, we want to use our product, and if you leave, you're losing it all type model. Um, but there's a lot of photographers that are okay with that, and they're doing it. But you're looking at about $500 a year or so to use their theme and their plugin together. Um, but if you've got a uh, really popular wedding photography website, it's obviously popular, um, so it can't hurt to look at. Then there's my friend Peter Adams. He has a plugin uh, called PhotoPress. He wrote an ebook called WordPress for, for Photographers, and uh, we're both co-managers of the Google Plus and Facebook groups WordPress for Photographers. Um, this is designed really more for developers. It's extremely basic. You use the media library, you insert a uh, WordPress gallery using the gallery shortcode, and then using a few parameters specific to PhotoPress, you can add the e-commerce onto it. The one downside that I would say to this one is that you're pricing each image individually. So although it's designed for selling photos, um, he hasn't addressed the um, selling many photos at different prices yet. So right now every photo is sold at the same price. Um, but it's completely free. And again, if you're looking for something super basic, it might be worth checking it out. Um, there's a PayPal extension to uh, accept, accept that. So um, pretty neat plugin. Then there's Sunshine Photocart. It's been around for a couple years now. It's also designed 100% for photographers in mind. It happens to originally be a fork of easy digital downloads. You wouldn't know it by looking at it because he did a lot of refactoring, but uh, it really is. And so he made a lot of image-centric modifications, very powerful. There's one unfortunate limitation with this, that your galleries can only be private. So if you are going to sell, if you need to sell any public images, so let's say you're at WordCamp Boston, you want to sell prints from WordCamp Boston, you cannot with Sunshine Photo Card unless you make it so that everybody logs in. So that's a little bit of a, of a, of a downside, but it's growing popularity and um, it's, it's pretty cool, uh, all things considered. Um, so worth considering for that too. Then comes Next Gen Gallery, uh, has over 1.3 million users packed with features like watermarking, backups, resizing for the front end display, and a lot more image-centric features. There's even a third-party Adobe Lightroom plugin that allows for seamless offline management and publishing. So you don't have to do everything from within your WordPress backend. You can do a lot of it from within Lightroom, which most photographers are working in anyway. Uh, and if you recall, I mentioned that uh, a lot of developers feel that uh, it's a an image-centric plugin like NextGen is too feature-rich, but uh, for some developers that might be true. For the target market, for the target market, it's exactly what they want. Uh, all the users are very happy with having all the features built in instead of having the extension model because they don't want a nitpick of what what to use. So NextGen Gallery has its own gallery management system outside the media library. This is very important. It's that means anything you upload within a post or page in the media library is not with uh, quickly, it's not really in Next Gen Gallery. It actually has a gallery system outside of it. Um, the next update will allow you to import from the media library, and we're even considering doing a uh, refactor to switch to the media library at some point as well. Um, so, a lot some developers don't like the fact that it's separated, but photographers they don't they don't really mind because their galleries are designed for a purpose, and they're not really trying to mix up what's in a blog post or a page with what's in a gallery. Um, so NextGen Gallery is designed for advanced imaging users who work with hundreds and thousands of images regularly. Photograph a wedding, you've got 800 photos, you want to throw up in a gallery for proofing. Um, you know, that's a lot of images to work with. But NextGen Gallery is not the e-commerce plugin, and that is where NextGen Pro really comes in. So if you remember, I, meant, I mentioned the extension is single plugin model. NextGen Pro is a single plugin installed on top of NextGen Gallery. All the e-commerce functionality is built into the one plugin. And it allows users to manage multiple price lists, assign them to specific galleries, 
and override individual images. So you can have one gallery with priceless A, and then if you need one image not for sale, or if you need one image to use priceless B, you can override that individually. Included within NextGen Pro is PayPal Standard, PayPal Express, Stripe, and check payments. They're all included, no extensions needed. The backup system of NextGen Gallery means that users can display web-optimized images on the front end and sell the full-size images, or sell from the full-size images, on the back end, meaning you can watermark the front end image, but the part that gets sold is not watermarked, and it comes from the original backup, which is secured through an HD access file. They can even use a proofing option to determine which their clients, which photos or images they want, that you want their clients to be uh, edited. So you have a gallery, and under each thumbnail will be a star, and your clients can, you know, um, click on each star, highlight the ones they want to be edited, send the photographer. The photographer gets a really easy uh, image list to paste into Lightroom. Lightroom shows them all the images, and now you can start editing. Very, very, very uh, efficient and, and simple. So, NextGen Pro is designed for target market, which means it's incredible for selling images. But it's not perfect. It doesn't have robust tax and shipping features like the other plugins yet. Um, we are going to be working on stuff like that. It doesn't have the incredible selection of extensions that the others do. But then again, it's not designed to generate commerce use, so it doesn't really need all these extensions that don't relate to selling images. So, how do we, as WordPress consultants, developers, and users, convince other users to stop mixing their, web, their WordPress website with a smug mug site or similar, Zenfolio, PhotoShelter, 500px, and all that. WordPress needs to offer features that are competitive to those services. We're seeing WordPress developers move in this direction with either an e-commerce to image approach, like what WooCommerce is doing, or an image-centric approach, which is what we're doing with NextGen Pro. In the end, an ideal solution for photographers is how we convert those photographers from a multi-solution uh, multi to WordPress alone. So we need to educate WordPress users about hosting, because when you go to SmugMug, you don't have to worry about hosting. You go to PhotoShelter, you don't have to worry about hosting. At WordPress, you have to worry about hosting. So in educating about hosting companies, of what, what is affordable, uh, what is speed optimized, what's managed, what's, what's a cloud server, educating about all this uh, is important. So, so users don't have to worry about downtime or slowness, especially when selling images. Images are heavy resource. Uh, they, they use a lot, a lot of resources. So if you're using a very poor quality server or host, you, know, you should expect slowness or downtime. So uh, I, I, I do a lot of SiteGround. I uh, highly recommend them. Um, they've got a lot of different uh, offers from shared to cloud to private servers. Uh, so we need to talk about create and offer products that answer questions that your target market asks. That's crucial. What is the target market? Make it easy for the users in that target market. Give them the features they want without making them do much research. Make it work. Um, and, and, and that is what is driving photographers like Colby Brown to migrate from other photo systems to WordPress. And I am happy to say he is migrating completely to NextGen Pro. One of the target market features that I... Um, having said yet, which is something that is crucial for photographers at least, is what's called lab integration. SmugMug and all those others, non-WordPress platforms, offer lab integration. There's nothing for WordPress because it's so complex. We're working on it, and it's almost done. And once it's done, tons of photographers that are using both plan on migrating. So that's huge. So that's a really big example of offering what the target market asks. What they want is what will drive them to convert. So my name is Scott Wentenwitz. I'm the community and blog regular at Photocrati and NextGen. I'm a photographer at first. I'm a blogger. And I work with many photographers on improving the WordPress websites. Um, so uh, I'm someone that's very happy to offer advice whenever I can. So you're welcome to send me an email, ask me any questions, send me a tweet, whatever you want to do. Um, you can find me everywhere at Scott Wyden. Uh, and with that, I'm going to uh, show you how to do a quick, quickly set up uh, to sell images in under 10 minutes. And what you actually find is it takes a lot less than 10 minutes to set this up. <coughs> Ooh, that's tiny. Okay. So, everybody see that sticky? All right. So 
these are basically the, set, the steps to, uh, to set up NextGen Pro to sell, to sell images. I already have them activated here. Um, NextGen Gallery and then NextGen Pro is the e-commerce aspect. So step one is to create pages. So all you gotta do is go to uh, the e-commerce options and you can see it says create new. This is the first time that I'm setting this up on this, uh, on this site. So it says create new. I just hit save and now all those pages are created, it's done. The shopping cart, the thank you page, all that's already set up. Then I gotta turn on the pro light box. So that is actually done in NextGen Gallery and the other options. So I go to other options, uh, light box effects, turn on NextGen Pro. And then you can see here there's a lot of customization options. And I'm not going to touch them all, but you can change colors, you can have image comments show by default, uh, you can have the shopping cart display by default, all these different things, uh, Twitter cart support, a lot of cool options. So I'm going to save that. And you'll see here there's also uh, image protection is here, the watermarking, it's all right in one spot. The next thing I'm going to do is go back, I'm going to create a price list. So I'm going to go to manage price list. I'm going to create a new one real quick and just call it or in Boston. Uh, I'm fine with the flat rate of $5 shipping. I'm going to say 8 by 10 and that's $10. I'm going to say 11 by 16 and that is $20. And then I'm also going to add um, a digital download of small, make that a dollar, and make it um, 300 pixels. Now remember I said that NextGen Pro will sell from the backup? So what's cool is I can say small and then original, make that $10 and leave it at zero pixels. So what happens is if the, if the customer buys the 300 pixel, NextGen Gallery will resize that down from the backup, the non-watermarked backup, and give it to the person at 300 pixels. That's what they bought. If they buy the original, it's giving them the original from the backup, full size. Through your DPI, whatever, whatever it is, your host has to be able to has to be able to support uploading a 10 megabyte JPEG at that point, but um, you can work with your host depending on, you know, if you need to with that. So I'm gonna save this price list, done. Now we're gonna upload a gallery. So I'm going to add an image gallery and I'm gonna call it WC VOS, add in some fun photos, just drag that here and start uploading. You can see I, this is the beta version, so this is an import from media library option right here, it's coming soon. Monday, I think. So the images were uploaded, and it's done. Now I'm going to go to Manage Gallery. I'm going to go into that gallery, and I'm actually going to set the price list right here. Work here at Boston is done. And you can see right here on the right side of this panel, I can use the gallery price list for this one image, or I can make it not for sale. So I'm going to make it not for sale. If there was another price list that I made, that would show up right here under Work here at Boston as well. So you can individually override what's, what price list is available. Now, that gallery is set up, ready to, to be sold. So all I gotta do is insert the gallery onto a, onto a page. So I'm just gonna create a page and call it uh, for sale. Insert the gallery. And I'm gonna do the pro film gallery. If you know, I'll do pro, the, just a regular thumbnail for instead. Yeah, I'll do, let's see that. And then work camp Boston gallery. Customize the display, turn on e-commerce, or even turn on proofing so you can see what that does. And I'll even turn on caption overlay so you can see that, it's pretty cool. Um, and I'll hide the title and description. And I'll leave the title on that. And fade in, save. Now, the placeholder is, is uh, inserted, I'm gonna hit publish, and then I will view this page. Now I didn't set up um, the payment gateways so let me quickly go back. Uh, that's one thing I left out, oddly enough. So e-commerce options, payment gateways, and you'll see they're all right here. I'm just gonna turn on check and test gateway. So you can see Stripe, PayPal Express, and PayPal Standard are all right here as well. Um, you can actually do Okay. All right, so let's go back to, that was a page and for sale. Now. Here's the gallery I just set up. Uh, I hover over it, I can see the titles and social sharing so I can quickly share to social media. Um, I did not, uh, did I not turn on, oh, I did not turn on e-commerce. Oh no, it is, okay, it is there. So you can see the first image underneath, there's no shopping cart icon. But these, the shopping cart icon are there. 
That's because I overrated the first image with not for sale. And you also see the stars. So I can star this one and say, tell the photographer I want this one to be edited, or this one. And then I can click on it, bring it large, and if you look down here, the yellow star is still there. So you can scroll through the photos. You can hit F, view at full screen, scroll through the photos nice and large. I can hit up and see the uh, description if there was one, more social sharing. I can hit the shopping cart or hit the e e uh, key on my keyboard, brings up the commerce aspect and add some stuff to the cart. And I do additional download. And then view the carts. And now here's the shopping cart. Um, it has the image file name here description of what's being sold, the products. If I hit pay with PayPal, it'll bring me to PayPal. Hit pay by check, it brings up this form. We style this to match Stripe. One thing that we did is Stripe does not require SSL. We are using, they have this little modal window, which makes it so you do not need SSL. We still recommend it because it makes it, your site look secure to your clients, but uh, it's not required. Um, because what would be inside of here would be actually on Stripe's site. Um, we are basically just sending the info just to Stripe. Um, and then right here I can just hit place order. This is the test payment gateway, so bypasses all transaction. And then here we go. So order is placed, has the information, and then your digital products are right here. So I can click on here and download that 300 by 200 photo that was resized automatically. So within like three minutes, I got you know a site set up ready to sell gallery. Obviously, if you were actually doing this for real site, you would take more time to set it up more appropriately and whatnot. But um, fairly simple. Made for images, not for selling t-shirts. <laughs> so any questions? I'll start over there. Okay. The images that you're selling? So the question is, when you sell the digital downloads, are they your images or some, or? Yeah, or they yeah so I, I think whatever your site is selling, that's what the answer would be. If, it, if it's your images, then you're selling your images. But if it's, if um, really, you could use this as a stock site, like a Getty Images or a iStock, and you can sell other people's work um, if you really wanted to. Really awesome. Um, where does the print come from? The physical item. Yeah. So right now, with at least with Nextgen Pro, um, it's self it's self fulfillment. So you get you'll get an email as a as the site owner saying new orders in place. Here's the file name. Find it in Lightroom or wherever your your images are. Order the print and ship it to this customer at this address. What we're working on is which is what I was talking about with the target market is lab integration. So uh, we're hoping, fingers crossed, within six months. We'll have labs integrated, so when an order comes in, it'll automatically go out to a lab. And you don't have to do a dime, anything, nothing at all. Fabulous. Yes. I noticed you um, added a um, symbol take pings. Um, it takes pings. And is there a size limit, like where it works as a size limit, or is it The size limit is based on your host. Um, so whatever your host can support is what we can support. Typically, a, a, a reliable host can up it to whatever you want. Um, yeah, uh, typically an image wouldn't get larger than, I'd say, 50 megabytes at most, even a raw file. Um, I mean, unless you're uploading a gigantic PSD file or something, but um, it's designed really to sell JPEGs at, 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 at heart, um, but it can support other image formats. Um, and we're always open to other formats that it doesn't support, of course. So. Yes? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear the for provision for... Uh, my question is about rights management. Is there any provision in any of these systems, next gen or otherwise, for selling images with managed rights? Uh, so you're talking about, like licensing and stuff? Exactly. Yeah, so, yeah. Chef, so check this out. Um, within the digital downloads portion, under uh, managed price list, I go into that price list, under digital downloads, there's a display link to license terms. I can click on that, choose a page that I've made for the license, and then, now watch this, I go, I'll, I'll just choose a sample page just for the heck of it. 
And let's go back to another page. So now, in under the e-commerce section, under digital downloads, there's a view license right here, view license terms. So you could say, um, your description could be, you know, 300 pixel personal license, 300 pixel commercial license. And then when they click on view license terms, you can say, this is what the personal license is for, this is what the commercial license is for. So then their purchase of it um, denotes acceptance of your terms, whether it's royalty free or however their rights are managed. Yeah, so you're basically saying in the license terms, by displaying it there, you're saying if you purchase this, you're agreeing to this license. Okay, thank you. Yes. Any other questions? Yes. Um, I work with clients of all different kinds, and the, the photographers in, in general have seemed to favor Zenfolio. And what I wonder is if there's any kind of social booster or search engine boost that, that they would maybe be clinging to in Zenfolio that there might be equivalent to, like even just the way it's tagged in, in WordPress for Right. So the question is, um, a lot of a lot of uh, photographers using Zenfolio, um, and the question is really is that because of like SEO type of things like keywording and findability, um, you might actually find Zenfolio is worse than SmugMug, which is worse than Squarespace, which is worse than WordPress type of thing. Like I don't know what the order is, but um, by far WordPress is the best for SEO. Right out of the box with no plugins, WordPress is better for SEO than any other platform. Um, you add the, the, the Yoast plugin and you've enhanced that. Um, but there's a lot that goes into image SEO specifically than just doing an alt name on alt tag or just throwing in tons of keywords. Keywords do nothing for SEO. In fact, they can hurt it more than help it if it's on the page. So um, if you actually go to Um, you can either go to nextgengallery.com slash SEO and download this PDF or go to nextgengallery.com slash image hyphen SEO and you get this, I wrote, I wrote up this really long thing about oops, image SEO, I'm talking about every single thing that goes into image SEO specifically. So you can, this is all 100% free, um, tons of that. So. Really, the biggest advantage of Zenfolio and these third, these other platforms is they control the environment, right? So that's one advantage of Squarespace. A lot of people are going from WordPress to Squarespace because Squarespace give you the fastest possible website because they control everything. Um, the lab integration. So two factors really is what's driving people to go elsewhere. If you can educate the people as to how to do it with WordPress with a good host, with lab integration coming soon, and um, uh, and how to do with SEO, you know, on on your own site, on WordPress. There's no reason for people to use other platforms. Can I tag on another question then? Uh, what about exit data? Is it keeping all that? Yes, so that's a really, really good question. That's also stated on here as well. So Matt Cutts, who uh, was the web, uh, web optimization evangelist or whatever his title was at Google, went on record saying, we are looking at exit data. We are looking at your geotag, the GPS data, your location for the photos. Um, we are not using it right now, but that doesn't mean we won't use it in the future. So leaving in all the appropriate exit data is super important. Leaving the keywords in the image leaving the description in the image exit data, all that is super important because although Google may not be looking at it now, they might in the future. So then yet another, can I sneak in another? <laughs> for, for let's say wedding photography, you mentioned it earlier, when we're uploading three, four hundred from one chip, we're hoping that they've already been through Lightroom and they've edited where they need to show their client. But for, for the photographer, it's most helpful to have the actual shop number, right. should we be saying that they should search engine optimize the naming or should we let them be happy 
proofing gallery, for example, typically those aren't public. Typically you would do that and have it define a password or some sort, so Google wouldn't see it anyway. Um, so, in a, you're talking about in a public gallery for sale, or you're talking about a... Somebody's purchasing, but if they're purchasing a, a digital version of a shop from their wedding, they're not going to be able to see When they download that, what would the name eventually Yeah, so it's really up to you. If you want to make it uh, optimized for search engines, you can do that. In Lightroom, there's an option to uh, export your file names based on the title that you make. So uh, I do this in my proofing galleries. Basically, I leave the file name as is, and I make, at least on the computer, my file name is as is, and then when I go to uh, ne my next-gen proofing galleries or you know, uh, e-commerce galleries, I will have it go export with the title of the image um, as the file name on the website. And what that allows me to do when I get the list of the file names, which is really a title, well, so, um, Bob and Jane's Wedding 01, or whatever it is. Um, NextGen's going to give you a list of the file names with, without the extensions. In Lightroom, you can then search for those file names by title, specifically, not by file names. You can actually search by title, and then it'll pull them up in your Lightroom, just as they would if there was a file name. Any final questions? Nope. One more. You ever see people upload an image and then sell it to the media? If it's a hot, current, unique photo? Um, I personally, I, I mean, not through, I, I'm sure it happens, um, but I haven't, I haven't come across it myself. Just one other quick one, Scott. What's the most expensive image you've seen on XGM Gallery? Um, I've seen people, you can, you can sell whatever you want. I've seen 500 for like prints, stuff like that. Um, digital downloads too, I mean, depending on what the photo is of, if it's for media, so if you're a stock, if you're a um, stock photographer who photographs sports and you want, um, you know, tops trading cards to buy your photo or whatever it is, you know, you might price that higher. So. It's up to you, really, what you want to sell it for. Thank you.